Mania week, finally, well fuck Wrestlemania, but IWTV's showcase of the fucking independence and the collective is here, it is now Thursday. I watched Fatalism by No Peace Underground last night, I'm ready for four, five days full of fucking wrestling. It's going to be a long, long fucking week, but we're going to try and get through all of it. Um, not all of it today, this is just a quick little update for predictions and the matches I'm most looking forward to, and little bits of news and stuff, but first we will go to the land of the rising sun for Japan, because there's already been four different shows now for the Deathmatch Survivor thing that I missed. One was in the 31st, which is when I recorded my last video of March, and we've got the final matches of Block A and Block B. This is at the Corrigan Hall, we had a self-produced board deathmatch, Violento Jack defeats uh, Takayashi, so Violento Jack wins Block A. I know Naomi. Come on. Come on then. The cat is here. The cat loves the deathmatch. Uh, and then we had Block B's final match in Iron Cage deathmatch. Drew Parker beats uh, Tosakamoto. So Drew Parker and Violento Jack are through for A and B. Aren't they? We love deathmatches. Oh yeah. Finally got my Sato Jin t-shirt before I travel on. Oh yeah. Thanks deathmatch worldwide. Uh, good fucking quality. Uh, then we've got the, f the next show was in um, on the 2nd of April, which is at the Shin Kaba, the, the GCW traveling, touring, building they used in Japan. Um, so we've got Block C, Dry Ice and Ice Cube Deathmatch, Takeda beats Vegeta, um, which I really want to see. I really, really want Takeda to win his group. And then we've got Block D, uh, Iron Cage, Fluorescent Light Tubes, uh, Ikishawa. Ishikawa, sorry, um, beat Kodaka, which is the same. I want Kodaka to win his group. Then again, he did win two years ago, so what do you do? The next night, on the 3rd of April, um, is in Shinzoka, Japan, at Twin Macy in the building. Uh, so we had Block C, which is a construction site death match, where uh, Fujita beat Hoshino, which is a shame. I'm looking forward to this. I'll get to see Hoshino against Takeda. That'll be fucking good. And uh, Katayami defeats Ishikawa in a light tube alpha death match. And finally, on the 4th of the 4th, 4th of April, we have got Block D, uh, Katanami defeats Hoya Hohaido, H-Y-O-D-O, in a G-Shock death match, and then we got Hoshino defeats Raijo Ito, and for Block C, in a light tube death match. Um, so, but the way things are looking, we've got Katayama, Possibly, and Takeda maybe moving through, but we've at least got Violent to Jack and Drew Parker. So we'll move on to IWA's double death match tournament happened. Cats destroying a lot of scratching post, scratching up, bleeding it up. Um, so I don't want to ruin that show. Um, I'll just put say that from the clips I've seen, because once again it's IWA, they refuse to stream for some reason. And uh, train wreck shows, I'll just say that they look great. Um, there was a couple of little videos I saw of the main event, uh, which looked awesome. It was, if you remember the couple of videos back, it was the two teams I picked to be in the finals that were in the finals. So good for me being a little fucking mark. Um, also, this is just small news for uh, GCW. Joey Janela put up a promo for um, his match against Chris Dickinson which was quite strange. It was good, but it was strange. He was talking about one of his friends called Matt, who put, who fed a possum or something to a snake, and then he put firecrackers in a snake's mouth and it blew its jaw off, and then he cut his head off with a butcher knife. And this was symbolic of Chris Dickinson and Joey Janelle's really. It was a good promo. It was confusing, and the Joey Janelle was telling all sitting at a bar with snakes on the bar. It was alright. It'd be good if Jake the Snake Roberts came down with uh, Janelle to that match. That's a match I'm uh, looking forward to uh, spring break. non death matchy. Well, I mean, it will probably be hardcore shit. Doors and chairs and all sorts of shit. Um, so that's GCW. ICW and Holds Bard is a big, bad update. Is Akira tested positive for COVID? So he is now out of all three of his matches, or possibly more of his matches if he went further in that tournament. And he's out of the uh, Planet Death, which has actually got a swanky new t-shirt on the GCW merch. Go and get fucking that. A no picture for that, it looks fucking cool. I've already ordered it. I assume it will ship in about 17 years when GCW normally ships stuff. Um, so, 
on night one, which is tonight, on uh, NHB 11, then and now, Neil Diamond Cutter's replacing Akira as the Rejects take on the Carnage crew of HC Loke, Tony DeVito and New Jack. On the, the next night at Pitfire X Battle of Tough Guys Tournament, Ruben Steele's taking the place of Akira, so we're going to get Ruben Steele against fucking Schlack, which is a match that's going to happen at No Peace Underground a month ago, which we did get Neil Diamond Cutter against Ruben Steele, which was awesome. But, um, what are you doing, Amy? Cat just goes crazy when I film stuff. Um, and finally, we've got against Orn Vite, which is a match that's meant to happen like three times now. Bobby Beverly is making his ICW uh, Nolds Bar debut in the chains against uh, Orn Vite, so that'll be interesting. I've seen Bobby Beverly wrestle like three times now, and he's been pretty good. Um, so that's really, really fucking shit for Akira, the one of the golden boys of ICW Nolds Bar, all these big fucking matches. GCW debut, three big full shows for ICW. Um, I'm sure he was probably doing stuff at No Peace Underground as well, but that's really fucking bad for him. But I mean, all the replacements look really good. Interesting matches. Um, now, I'm going to Fatalism Review, which I watched last night. Now, it was alright. It was at the sound bar. I would say there was a very, very... If you watch No Peace Underground, and No Peace Underground likes to advertise the violence. They like to show these ridiculous structures that they set up with all the glass and fire and light tube contraptions and barbed wire boards with light tubes on top and glass on top. And people bumping through everything and just sick fucking shit, like light tubes in every match. There was a very, very distinct lack of that at the show last night. There was light tubes in Manders um, against Paro, which was opening the match, which was good. The feed was a little bit shitty for me. Um, but overall, the show was, when I, I've done a little highlights video um, for it, the show was okay overall, but the thing is, is it's Wednesday. A lot of the people, like for example, Atticus Kogar, John Wayne Murdoch, uh, people like that, have got matches Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sun. you know what I mean? They've got matches every single day, and they've not just got matches every day, they've got multiple matches every day. Um, so I can understand why they're cutting back on a little bit of the sick bumps, like there was very very few, and there was a really really nasty, there was a match between uh, Otis Kogar and Lord Crew, the hallowed, um, defeated Bam Sullivan and G Raver, and Otis, uh, Otis Kogar gave Bam Sullivan a, a Death Valley driver off the stage through a door, and um, it was propped up by two chairs like making a bridge for the door, and as he put him through it, the chair like moved on the concrete of the bar floor, smacked into G Raver's hand, and he didn't look like he had any like feeling in his hand and I went, oh my god, it was fucking scary. And then there's a bit where he was putting like tattoo needles into like Lord Crew's head and his hand was like really like limp when he was doing it. And I was like, oh fuck, like I've not read anything, but I was speaking to people on Facebook and stuff and like when I noticed that I was like, holy shit, like he looks like his hands fucking hurt. He was off for like fucking like a year and a half for like that bad hand injury after the light tube thing where in that match, the big ladder light tube thing with uh, Jimmy Lloyd. So, hope, hope G Raver's okay, fingers crossed, but that just looked sick, I was like, oh god, and then Sue Young came, missed him in the face, and the Hallowed won in that match, what other matches, um, Jamie Seragal was against Atticus Kogar, that was a good match, it's Atticus, it's usually always good, Atticus won, um, the main event was supposedly meant to be a 2 out of 3 falls match between Matthew Justice and John Wayne Murdoch, and um, it was just a one fall thing, and Eric Rowan, Redbeard, came out, choke slammed Matt Justice off the stage, or like the big hand slam thing off the stage through a guardrail on a table, threw uh, Johnny Murdoch on top of him, and Johnny Murdoch won. No two at three falls, and then he went away. Uh, so the show, like I said, it's the first show of four or five days worth of wrestling, so it's just the very first thing. I don't expect violence. All the matches were relatively good. The two, the women's match was really good. I forget who it was. Sawyer Wreck was against somebody, but I can't remember what the other girl's name was. And um, that was all right as well. It was, uh, Kit Osborne was there. Um, he was fighting a guy I'd never seen before. That was a decent match. Kit Osborne getting a match. Also, the show started half an hour late, and they added an extra match on. I was like, maybe they shouldn't have added that match, and just maybe made the main event go longer. There's a lot of fighting outside in the main event, which I know people like to do, which would be really, really good if you're at the soundbar. Uh, Johnny Murdoch and Matt Justice were like fighting out into the street, and Matt Justice done like a, a snooker splash off the top of like a fucking big truck, uh, like an SUV. Um, but like for you watching at home, you can't see fuck all, and you're like, it's just like half of the match was just outside, and then it just kind of ended with Eric fucking Rowan coming in. So it wasn't my favourite No Peace Underground show, but it was enjoyable. 
Um, it was good. It's in the sound bar, so can't complain really. Um, what else happened on the show? I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, uh, I finally got to see the No Peace Underground World Title. Eric Ryan spat on it, which was funny. Um, and he beat Nolan Edwards in a match that pretty much just featured carpet strips, which was good. It was interesting. No light tubes again. But I suppose they're kind of keeping themselves. All I think they're more or less just keeping them toning it down. But it's a strange thing because you're so used to the soundbar and through all the advertisements through the show of how violent and sick and no peace and underground and bloody and glass and everything it is. And there's very, very little of that. The sort of most sort of violent thing that happened was probably Johnny Murdoch going through a pane of glass and his arm getting cut quite bad, like his sort of shoulder bit. But I mean, I can't complain. I understand they've all got like four more days to go. Uh, and probably the best thing of the show was RSP was on commentary for the matches featuring Kogar, Ryan, and I am Otis Kogar as well, who uh, RSP trained, which I didn't actually know. But I mean, I suppose he did if he trained Atticus, I would assume so. But anyway, it was interesting, it was funny hearing him on commentary, uh, just being a dick to people, apart from the guys that he liked. I enjoyed RSP being on commentary, that was good. So, Fatalism, kind of middle of the road show, but I understand why it's middle of the road. You wanted the show to start on time, you wanted there to be more blood and violence, but I understand. I understand why there was less violence than there would be normally in an OP show, and it probably being late wasn't their fault, so it was okay. I enjoyed it for what it was. I like Otis Kogar having put in a pig's head on people. That's a good fucking gimmick. I want to see more of Otis Kogar and uh, Lord Crew in the, in the chains. We need tag matches in the chains, fucking hell. And anyway, finally, for this quick little news update, um, these are my top 10 matches and predictions for um, no, pretty much just no peace ICW and GCW, because that's pretty much what I'm going to be watching predominantly. I'm going to go back and probably watch everything. I'm, there's, there's shows like Effie's Big Gay Brunch, um, Subterranean Violence, um, Alley Cat's Real Hot Girl shit, the Acid Cup, uh, lots of these things. Um, I'm probably not going to watch, probably watch them like next week because there's so much stuff to keep up with and so much things I've got to do and then watch everything live and you know when No Peace Underground uh, starts at 5am and then to get up the next day and stuff, uh, it's just not, it's not, it's not doable, which is good though, I mean, but I mean I'll buy them anyway so it'll be fine. Um, I've seen the setup for both shows now, uh, today. I saw the IWT, uh, IWTV is at the place where Pit Fighter 5 was. No, Pit Fighter 5? Either Pit Fighter 5 or 4. The one where um, Alex Ocean got that really, really nasty big gash in his back from the gusset plate board where there's kind of like a fish tank thing, big hands on the walls. And uh, the collective's actually outside in the car park of the Cuban club. And uh, the first show is the Joy Janela thing, so it's quite, quite a small crowd, but a decent enough crowd for what the show is. Like 11 a.m. in the morning, but they can expand it massively because they've got a huge space to work with. Uh, so anyway, moving on. So the first match everybody's looking forward to, I'm just going to do these in descending order, and then I'll do notable mentions because there's so much fucking stuff going on. RSP against Gage, which is the main match that, I mean, RSP and the 4 over on roughshod over independent wrestling since fucking since he attacked Nikki at NGI4 and won the belt and run Ricky run and the pandemic and Gage getting hurt so Gage has to win or else it'll be like that RVD Cena thing or else the fans will riot I don't think they'll riot but I think they will be extremely pissed off if Gage doesn't retain his, his world championship um, next match I'm most looking forward to is Atticus against Reed at NHB12 I love I love Atticus Reed's great um, hopefully Atticus wins because he want, I want to make it three or make it two for two or three for two. Um, that's probably my top favourite match from NHB 12. Then the next match I'm most looking forward to number three is Satu Jin against Ruben Steele. Can't fucking wait for that. Uh, I've got the blade. Find it again. It's inside some packaging to not ruin the blood. Come on. Come on. So much crap up here. There we go. There we go. There we go. So... Hopefully I'll maybe get another weapon, signed weapon from their match this time in the chains. Really loved that match. My favourite match probably of both shows. So really looking forward to that. Oh yeah, sorry. I think what's this? It's a Oh, it's an Eric Ryan signed bloodshed till. Thank you. 
Danny DeManto and ICW for doing all these merch things for all those dirty, filthy marks. Um, then we've got these, these, this other show, uh, this other match is at ICW knows Bar 12 as well. Eric Ryan against John Wayne fucking Murdoch, that'll be the main event. Uh, farewell to the Pawn Shop. Number five, Alex Cologne versus fucking Lucky at Planet Death in the Danny Havoc Memorial double glass crush fucking death match. Uh, Lucky put on Twitter that he's, apparently his gear, he might not have any gear, he lost his gear, uh, travel, fucking planes fucked him over. So that's not the best, hopefully he gets his gear. He does have another day to get it. Uh, then six, I'm looking forward to Alex Ocean versus uh, Brandon Kirk, two of my fucking favourites. They've obviously got Riley Madison and Casey Kirk as well. They should just make those two guys a tag team, the two ladies on the side. Why not? They're fucking like, they're the two sort of detestable heel dickheads. Make them a tag team. You know, just have, have more tag matches, please, ICW. Uh, seven, we've got Schlack versus Nolan Edwards of Planet Death. Really looking forward to that. Um, Edwards, hopefully, I'm just going to see Edwards win. You know, he, he does all these matches. He, the last thing I think he won was against... Who did he win? I'm sure he got beat by Atticus. Did he beat... I think he beat Tony Deppin in the chains at NHB 10. And I'm sure he beat Brandon Kirk at NHB 9. But aside from that, he's not really, really had many big wins, so it'd be good. I don't think he'll beat Schlack, but good if he did. Number eight, Atticus against Masada at Spring Break. Come on, fucking Atticus. Everybody wants Masada to fucking kill him. I want Atticus to, you know, take the torch. Not pass the torch down to Atticus, take the fucking torch from Masada and become a sort of rebel, like, deathmatch icon himself. And um, then we've got number nine, Masada against Eric Ryan at Planet Death. That'll be really good. Really good to see Eric Ryan like back doing death matches after a little hiatus. Um, that'll be awesome. All the Masada matches are really fucking good. Um, then number 10 is uh, Jeff King coming back to fight Neil Diamond Cutter. Um, hopefully Neil wins, he deserves it, but I mean Jeff's going back. Neil really doesn't really get many wins. I mean he's awesome anyway, but I'd like to see him win. Um, but Jeff King might win, he's returning. And these are just notable mentions, there's so many just different matches. So we've got the six man NHB 11, um, which is New Jack and the fucking Carnage crew against the Rejects, Reed and uh, Jomi Murdoch and Neil Diamond Cutter now. Kirk versus Demanto at Nolds Bar 11, their last match at uh, Pit Fighter 5, I think Pit Fighter 5 or 4, where he, Demanto fucking knocked him off the top through the flames. Awesome. Pondo Casanova, No Peace Underground, Murder Mania. With uh, Marcus Crane, the special referee, Taipei fucking deathmatch. Really cool uh, promo with Pondo for that, actually. Um, Cologne against Masada at No Peace Underground, Shallow Graves. Mance Warner against Claxton at No Peace Underground, Shallow Graves. The five man um, fucking No Peace Underground match at Murder Mania. If I could remember, I've not written down the names. Jake Crist. Um, who have we got? Jake Crist, Shane Mercer, Neil Diamond Cutter, Gary J. And somebody else with the name escapes me, I'll find it and put it up. Uh, Joy Janelle against Chris Dickinson. Um, I hope Janelle wins. I mean, Dickinson probably win. Math against Nolan Edwards at NHB 12 in the chains. Come on, Nolan, fucking win. AJ Gray's open challenge at Planet Death. Since obviously Akira's not there uh, to fight AJ Gray. It'd be good if Gage came down since AJ Gray did so beat him for his title before the um, RSP era begun. Be good for Gage to come in, hopefully with his newly won GCW title. Uh, Nolan versus Crist, which is tonight at NHB 11. That'll be good. Like CJ Crist in the chains as well. Um, Deppin's show looks awesome as well. I'll be, I'll be definitely watching that live in the afternoon on the Saturday. I mean, it starts at 12 in America, so it'll be 5 here. Then we'll have that. Then at 5. Then... Then at 8, we'll have Planet Death. And then we'll get to 1... In the morning for me, we so I'll have Beer House, Planet Death, and NHB 12 all on that day. Camp Saturday's probably my favourite day of the week for all these shows. Um, what else do we have? Pondo against Matthew Justice at Planet Death. And finally, the PFX uh, Battle of Tough Guys fucking matches. So many matches, but first round stuff. Uh, Justin Kyle against Gary J, number two. Their match at NHB 10. This will be awesome in the pit. Uh, Math against Bruce Santi, fucking hell. I mean, it'd be good to see Santi Kyle fight like four, but I don't know. But it's Dan Math, Schlack against Ruben Steele, that match we didn't get from last month at No Peace Underground. And uh, John Wayne Murdoch against Reed Bentley. 
So Laz, quick news update predictions. Well, not predictions. I have no fucking idea who's going to fucking win half these matches. And that's the thing is I don't really want to predict them. These are the matches I'm most looking forward to. Um, I want Gage to win. Other than that, I'm not fussed. I want Gage to win. I want Atticus to win. I want Safu Jin to win. Eric Ryan to win. Alex Colon to win. Ocean to win. Edward to win. Atticus to win. Ryan to win. Neil Diamond Cutter to win. And that's just for the that's just for the first ten that I mentioned. I can't really do predictions other than I think Gage will fucking win the belt. I'm too excited for all this to be predicting and planning out entire fucking tournaments of stuff and everything. But anyway, it is here finally, WrestleMania weekend, the collective and the showcase of the independence. Please support the companies. Pay ten dollars for IWTV, you'll get like fucking fifteen shows worth. It's awesome. It's well worth the money. And uh, for GCW, you're having to pay individually or pay like fucking seven thousand fucking dollars for like I'm exaggerating slightly for the collective pass. I'm just going to be watching um, Planet Death and uh, Spring Break. I'll be paying for both of them, and I'll probably go back and get the other ones afterwards. And as we say always on the news that broke glass, no death match, no life. Support independent fucking wrestling. Woo!